It's time for some good news, Mama. It's time for some good news, Mama. It's time for some good news. Welcome back, friends. I've got a bunch of good news for you tonight. Three separate good news stories that aren't even climate change related. And of course, I have the weird story. This one involves crotches. Yeah. Crotches. Crotches. I've layered this episode like a lasagna. Good news story, right on top, right in the middle, and right on the bottom, where it can soak up all those delicious top layers of other good stories. So there might be a little bit of crotch juice on that, in that last one. After that, I have some questions that I'll be answering from my whopping audience of 130 <laughs> current subscribers. All right, let's get right into the first story, which takes place in Minnesota with a lovely pay it forward story at a Dairy Queen. What started as a random act of kindness at a Dairy Queen drive through resulted in over 900 cars paying for each other's meals in a pay it forward chain of events 900 cars the manager of the store said that this happens every once in a while but it's usually only about 15 or 20 cars but this one was 900 cars long it lasted for two and a half days and there were over ten thousand dollars worth of transactions throughout it that is a lot of ice cream can you imagine being the person that stopped <laughs> that stopped that chain maybe it's someone that you know desperately needed a blizzard transplant but still, 900 people, I've never heard of anything like that. Next, for our first eco story, we are going to Denmark and we're gonna talk about an abandoned prison that is being transformed into an eco paradise. I think that this prison's concept is so cool. It was built in 1859 out in the middle of nowhere and the idea for this prison was that prisoners would enter through a church and then they were isolated from each other after that. And that you see the little star-shaped pattern right here. The thought was that this would serve as a rehabilitation of sorts. and that was back in 1859. So anyway, there are plans to repurpose this building and the space around it to create a car-free neighborhood with local startups, a fitness center, and a brewery. 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 I can't say brewery and I can't say jewelry or the word iron. 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 Uh, whatever, man. So here's another cool part. They're going to dismantle some of the prison because it's just too far gone and they're going to use those bricks to build new housing. So not only is the building itself being repurposed, but the parts that they're tearing down, they're building new buildings out of. Around 4,500 people will live in the new 40 acre district. Man, Denmark and Sweden and Norway, all those countries sound so incredible and it's very enticing how much they care about climate change. Eco story number two. There is a Hawaiian seaweed that makes cows 90% less gassy. That's good for climate change and for the farmers who have to be around them. I just talked about this in my Impossible Burger review video that you can watch, but cows burp out a lot of methane. A lot of people think that it's cow farts that are bad for the environment, but actually 90 to 95% of it is straight out of their mouths through their burps. Anyway, check out that video if you want to see some more facts about cows. This Hawaiian seaweed is red, not green, and it is called Asparagopsis taxiformis. If you replace just 0.4% of a cow's feed with this seaweed, it reduces the amount of methane that the cows produce by more than 90%. The seaweed is said to be a little salty to taste, but uh, no cows have returned it to the kitchen yet, so uh, I know some people that could use this. Well, I guess I... <laughs> I guess I don't know any humans that produce methane. Never mind. Moving on. Now we're getting right into that middle layer of lasagna. This story warms my heart and it really makes me want a beer. As a matter of fact, uh, hold on. I'm going to go get one. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Hello. Testing. I feel uh, really bad because I live in St. Louis and St. Louis is like a beer mecca. But uh, I'm out of St. Louis beers. I just haven't been drinking very much during the pandemic, like at all. I still have a Missouri beer. I have a Kansas City Boulevard. So let's do some ASMR. Oh yeah. Unfiltered weed. Right in your mouth. That was all foam. Actually, I think this beer is pretty old. <laughs> anyway, this story is all about beer. And the popular Toronto pub Swan Dive made a post on Facebook saying that it was struggling to pay its rent because of the pandemic. Customers came to the rescue and bought 
all of their beer to help out. The owner told CNN, we were blowing through our savings and I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to pay rent towards the end of the month. So I wrote on Facebook asking people to come buy the beer that we had in our stock room and it worked. People just started coming out of the woodwork, Shiner said. Some people we hadn't seen in years. Sounds like they were in the woods to me, Shiner. Swan Dive completely sold out of its more than 90 cases of craft beer in just a few days. The generosity of these locals is gonna allow this much loved pub to stay around until spring when it can safely open its doors again. Good on you, Toronto, cheers. Next. This story was brought to me by my good friend, Kyle. He's an engineer, so he is a much smarter person than I am. Here he is dressed as a lumberjack next to Ace Ventura. That's my other good friend, Jim Carrey. He's my other good friend. So this next story is about Steve Wozniak. If you haven't heard about Steve Wozniak, I don't blame you. I mean, he's only co-founded one teeny tiny little company, Apple. 45 years after co-founding Apple, he started a new business in the green tech and blockchain space called eForce. If you don't know what blockchain is, okay, boomer. Just think cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and all that. So what eForce is, is it is a green investment platform. It allows any investor to quote unquote help the planet. Any investor can now participate in and financially benefit from worldwide energy efficiency projects. The crazy thing about this is it launched on December 3rd and its token has already increased in value by 1400% in just one week after launching. Cryptocurrency is actually terrible for the environment, but that's a whole other thing. I'm planning on doing a whole video about that in the future, so. I'm not against crypto, so please don't come at me yelling at me. Next. Two incredible women are enduring their second winter in the Arctic to highlight climate change. I really apologize if I mispronounce your names, which I'm sure I'm going to do. Sonevia Sorby and Hild Fallenstrom have spent over 8,000 hours together in a tiny cabin in the Norwegian Arctic with no electricity or running water. The two women have an online platform called Hearts in the Ice. In case you forgot, it is pitch black in the Arctic for months on end and they are in a tiny cabin with no electricity and no running water in the Arctic with no sun. That sounds like my nightmare. The darkness aspect alone would be almost too much. I would need more of this. Oh. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's a little outdated. Not only that, but they have had polar bears come right up to their doorstep several times, they've said. These two ladies have been collecting scientific data for organizations like the Norwegian Polar Institute and NASA. They take ice core samples, they study wildlife, and like I said, they've had all sorts of encounters with polar bears, Arctic foxes, elves. These two women are the first all-women team to overwinter in the Arctic, and this is their second winter. They went back in October. They've reached over 5,000 and children through their online educational forum so far. So these two women are, are amazing. Check them out on Instagram at Hearts in the Ice. They have a website, they have a blog. They're doing some amazing stuff. They're inspiring to me and, and hopefully they can, you know, continue to inspire young girls and boys um, along the way. All right, you know what time it is. It's Iron Crotch Kung Fu time. I told you I couldn't say the word iron can't say it. So I learned all about this just today. There's a whole branch of Kung Fu dedicated to slamming yourself in the crotch over and over and over. Apparently it has been practiced for over 300 years in the village of Jun Thun. It's been kept a fiercely guarded secret. Yeah, I'd keep that a secret too if I was uh, in the basement slamming myself in the crotch repeatedly with a log. But it's been kept such a secret that there's worry now that the practice will disappear if more people don't take it up. The amount of people practicing the Iron Crotch Kung Fu has dropped from 80 to just 5 who can still do it. Yeah, probably because everyone else died. But they've opened up the practice to social media and they've already gained several new insane students. I give you guys all the props in the world and I genuinely hope that uh, your style of Kung Fu carries on for generations. I don't actually think you're weird. I think it's just incredibly, <laughs> incredibly painful looking. Yeah. Man, having this beer right here is nice. I should do this every Friday. I should probably make a note of that. All right, we've reached the bottom layer of lasagna. It's been soaking up all those top layers, all that iron crotch, but now we are down to the ultimate feel good noodle. This is the story of a missing dog and a stranger who helped to find him. 
Brian James from Cairo, New York came across a flyer online for a missing dog named Meadow, a one-year-old golden retriever. So what did Mr. James do? He drove a few towns over to Andy's New York and started looking for Meadow with his drone. He canvassed miles and miles of trees, and then he spotted a tiny white dot. Spoiler alert, it was Meadow! He then quickly took the foot where the drone was and he found her deep in the woods and she looked very, very happy to see him. I would show you the videos, but uh, I would probably be sued for copyright infringement. Meadow was lost for 10 days in the woods, and she was uh, quickly reunited with the family though, so. Brian did this for free. Nobody asked him to do this, nobody paid him to do it. It's just a feel good story all around with that one. All right, that was it for the news stories. Now. I have some questions from the audience, my whopping 130 subscriber audience. I love all of you, thank you very much. I have a few questions that I'm gonna get to right now. Let's see what we got here. This one is from Taylor. I've only met you once, Taylor, but you were a lovely person, and I look forward to meeting you many more times after the pandemic and becoming good friends. So I'm gonna consider you a good friend already. Here's her question. Why are hellbenders called hellbenders? I don't know what a hellbender is. So <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. What is a hellbender? A hellbender, also known as the hellbender salamander, is a species of aquatic giant salamander. So Taylor, this is what PBS says. No one is sure how hellbenders got their name, but one theory is that fishermen named them hellbenders because they quote unquote, look like they crawled out of hell and are bent on going back. They're also called mud cats, devil dogs, and snot otters. <laughs> I've been called a snot otter before. It hurts. I have not, but it, I can imagine it would hurt. And she also has a follow-up question, a bonus question. Let me give a little preface here, just in case you don't know, I launched this channel. I started off with my first video, living in a tree for 72 hours. It was a tree that was on the property that I grew up at, um, at my parents' house. So she asked me, do you feel particularly attached to that tree after your experience with it? The answer to that is yes, I definitely do. I've only been back there a few times since I, since I did the video, but both times that I've been back, I've definitely stared at the tree and thought about my experience up in the tree, and I'm sure that for the rest of my life, every time that I go back there, I will think about when I spent three full days up in that tree. Thank you very much for your questions, Taylor. Those were amazing questions. I think we have time for one more. And I only have like <laughs> one more question that anybody asked me anyway, so. Top fan and great friend, Caitlin, asked me, when I take plastic grocery bags to my store for their special recycling bin, do they actually properly recycle these? I always forget to put my reusable bags in the car. So Caitlin, I am very glad that you asked this question because I'm going to be doing a deep, a really thorough recycling video down the road. I haven't done it yet because I actually, there's so much involved with the recycling. The answer to this question is they are absolutely supposed to, and a lot of them do, but there are some that don't. I've also read about colleges, for example. There are some college campuses that they directly, they take all their recycling and throw them directly into the trash. It's not just college campuses. It's not just grocery stores. There are a lot of places where they literally just dump it all into the garbage. Um, so the answer is yes, they are supposed to, and yes, there is plenty of evidence of the special plastic bag recycling bins being taken to and properly recycled. You can always just call them up and ask them. I don't know what grocery store you shop at. You can hold them accountable, ask for evidence, ask what recycling center they take them to, how often they take them to the recycling center. And uh, you know, if they're getting called out for it, then maybe it'll kick them into action if they haven't been great with it. But they are supposed to, a lot of them do, some of them don't. Recycling is a very, very messy thing, especially now that China is no longer buying our recycling from the United States. And my final kind of jokey question that I got from another good friend, Nathan, is asking me if bidets actually work. Well, I'm gonna hold off on that answer because I'm gonna be doing a review video of a bidet. So hold on to your butts and wash them real good. Thank you guys for your questions. This makes me feel more interactive than just, you know, talking. I have, I happen to have a mirror here because I'm gonna put paneled mirrors over behind my thing. So this is what I normally see when I do these videos. This is what you guys look like to me. Let's give you a quick little hug. So anyway, it's really good to get some 
interactiveness going. I'm drinking a beer, I'm answering questions. Even though I have a migraine, I think that this is my favorite some good news why the world burns around us so far. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that those stories brought you some joy and that they lead you into a wonderful weekend where you can have your own personal good news stories. Bye!